Welcome back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out on the road each and every Friday, for the most part in the fall. This week, we'll be at Cooper's North, up at Timonium. All of, of course, brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We'll be giving away Raven scratch-offs at Cooper's, as well as eating some gumbo, because I dig the gumbo at Cooper's North, to tell Patrick that. Uh, also, our friends uh, at Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. Make sure you're taking advantage of that. It is restaurant week around here through the 25th. Uh, make sure you go out, support local, buy local, eat local. Everybody's showing off. And, of course, our friends at Goodwill, where I fought Goodwill all weekend. I'm wearing my Goodwill shirt. Lisa Rasiniak is here. A little under the weather today, but we've uh, we've gotten her some hot tea and some uh, honey. Uh, she's going to bring it in here. She is the hardworking CEO of all things Goodwill here for the greater Chesapeake area and uh, has some updates amongst other things. I got fresh belt buckles for you. First things first, it's Halloween, right? I mean, this is a big season for Goodwill, right? Yeah, it's our busiest time of the year. Well, it was busy for me last weekend trying to put together a whole truck full of stuff for you. It is interesting when summer's over, the weather changes a little bit. We get seasonal and sort of in the mood to clean and do different things. Um, and then I wonder what happens to all this stuff. You've got a great story here about a partnership. Um, and one of the reasons we get together is to teach me things. But you're talking about the things we give you that you keep out of landfills. You said this to me for a long, long time. And I have stuff, and I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Like, I wonder if Lisa will take this. My wife's like, we're going to give that to Goodwill. I'm like, she ain't taking that. So we got to talk about that. But when you do get things that maybe feel like junk or trash or something that will be in a dump, it's really important to Goodwill to make sure that that stuff doesn't wind up there, right? Right. So uh, let's just say that uh, you what you have a truckload of donations and, um, you know, some stuff winds up that doesn't wind up selling in our store and sell in our outlet. Um, and this week we're going to talk about plastics, hard plastics, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, also clean plastics. So I'll just differentiate the two. So uh, plastic film is uh, the garbage bags that you load up your donations in to bring us the donation. Um, we are collecting plastics and we're gonna be collecting we'll receptacles in our the front of our stores to also collect this. So, you know, when you go to the grocery store and they give you the plastic bags, um, they count um, any kind of shrink wrap material, um, anything that has that thin coating of plastic. Um, glad plastic bags, you know, Ziploc bags, those kind of things. Um, we're we're going to take them, we're going to bail them in a company out of Winchester, Virginia called Trex. Um, they make plastic decking. Um, Not to be confused with trucks, because I made that mistake. This is a truck. That is a Trek, right? Trek is like, uh, it's Trex is the, uh, it's like a particle board. Um, and it withstands all kind of weather. So a lot of people get their decks made out of treks because it's so weather resistant and, you know, you don't have to keep staining it, et cetera. Um, so it's a little better than wood. So, but they take the plastic, melt it down and then reconstitute it to make a board, uh, which makes your duck. So they are, they came to us and they said, we love to get all the plastic. We know Goodwill gets a lot of plastic because we get a lot of donations. And um, can we, you know, buy this plastic from you. So we've already sent a truckload of, uh, I guess, 40, 40 bales of plastic. Now, if I break that down um, to you for in layman's terms, a bale is, um, you see, a bale is about um, 1,500 pounds. See, I think of like a bale of hay when I think bale, right? I think of a big, that's when I think, Big circle on the back of a tr of a big truck out on a farm, right? Literally. Yeah, something like that, right? We we wire wrap it and at our uh, recycling facility, and then we load it on a trailer, send it to Winchester. They're making decking, so um, really That's cool amazing. recycling project. And then um, on the other plastic end, um, we're taking hard plastics like you know these uh, plastic bottles. Like, sure. You know, I'm not. They're not Hard, yeah, very, very much so. I mean, <laughs> it feels like the whole world's made of plastic. Like if I just think about in my room right now, how much around me is made of plastic. It's kind, of, it's in, it's incredible. But more than that, how much is is put into waste, right? Literally. Yeah, and so we're gonna keep that kind of 
plastic, which is a harder plastic. Um, think, think of water bottles. Think of, um, gosh, you know, the, the bins that you store like your Halloween decorations in and your, you know, holiday stuff in. Uh, it's that hard plastic. We're going to be taking that, putting it through a machine to shred it. And uh, we'll be talking about some exciting things that we're going to do with that, but it's actually going to be remanufactured for another product, yeah. um, which I can't talk about yet. I'm under an NDA, so um, we're we're really making a concerted effort to to be uh, very conscious about keeping stuff out of the landfill. Well, I'm always conscious of this, but I I, I took a trip to Hawaii. Did I ever tell you my Hawaii story? About three years um, ago, we went to Hawaii, and we went. Uh, when the Ravens beat Seattle, do you remember that Ravens had a bye week after they kicked the snot out of Russell Wilson? It was sort of a coming out party for Lamar that year. They were really good. And we flew to Hawaii and never, I had never been to Hawaii. I've been all over the world. I don't know why I hadn't been to Hawaii, probably because Southwest Airlines didn't fly there. So we, we flew to Hawaii. And when we landed in Maui, we had been on the big island for a day or two. We landed in Maui and we turned this corner and parked the car and we went to this beach. And out on the beach was this beautiful turtle. And I saw it before my wife did on the cliff. And, and like, I knew she'd freak out. So I said, oh, my God, you're not going to believe what I see. Because I was walking away from her. I'm like, don't look. Just go around the corner. We walked down. And we thought the turtle might have been dead. It was just resting. It was fine. We went down near the turtle. And when I got down onto the turtle on this pristine, perfect Maui, Hawaii beach, I looked down and I saw colors little blues and reds and greens and yellows and blues and reds and bright colors. And I looked down and I pulled the sand up and I could see in the sand pieces of plastic everywhere. And I thought, that's not normal. And, and, and no offense, but I've never seen that in California. I've never seen that in Ocean City. I've never seen that in the Caribbean. I've just never seen it. But out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, that's when it really became aware to me, like, oh, my God, we have a problem here. And I know there's whole floating countries of plastic out in the ocean that I've read about that I've seen. I think if you've seen video of that, but when you see yeah. it with your own eyes next to a turtle on the beach in Maui, you really feel the impact of we got to do something about this. And it's up to people like you, leaders, CEOs, people making decisions to make sure that 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 doesn't continue because i mean i saw it with my own eyes and even the reported it sounds far-fetched but it's legitimate and real and if you go there you can see it and it's because we've done it the wrong way for a long time i think i think we have and i think you know there's been uh there's a cost associated with this so you know i think part of um what's great about goodwill is that we find creative ways to you know turn it into another product which also creates revenue for goodwill programs to help people get jobs. So um, that's the whole beauty of it. We're, um, you know, creative business leaders. And this is a partnership with um, three CEOs from obviously Maryland, Washington, and Delaware. We're all partnering together. So it's, you know, a great collaboration. We're all contiguously, you know, located. So it's easy. And, you know, Trex is in Winchester. It's not a far haul. It's an hour away. So, um, you know, this makes a lot of sense for us. We are, you know, instead of taking stuff because, you know, we have to pay for trash. So if we don't sell stuff in a store and it's just, you know, let's just say that plastic bin, you know, has a crack in it. We can't sell that. Right. So it's going to, it's going to the landfill and we have to pay to, you know, we have to pay for the trash, um, by the pound. So when you think about that, it's a cost for us too. Um, so not a good use of resources. So we're turning in into something that's really trash, literally trash into, you know, a material that's going to help, you know, create, manufacture another product. Well, just remember the turtle company. story in Maui and know you're doing something good, all right? I will. Lisa Rosiniak's here. She's from Goodwill. I have the little truck. I have um, put together a bunch of stuff. So this is a good time. I mean, we could talk about Halloween, and that's coming up. And uh, I think my, my wife and, and I and my son and daughter, we're doing four different David Bowies. I think we're doing <laughs> Aladdin <laughs> Sane. I think that's what we're doing, and we're going to use Goodwill to be a part of this. But more than that, with our partnership, and I love talking about what you guys do and Excel and all jobs programs and all that, but I think most people know of you as a place they go and buy stuff or a place they leave stuff, right? And I would say for us, we're at that point where we've been doing a lot of cleaning, pulling stuff together. And literally, I had this beautiful little mini coffee table sort of low to the ground thing that I think might be nice for yoga knickknacks. But my wife and I are like, eh, you know, 
we'll give that to Goodwill. And I'm like, well, will we or won't we? So this is the time where it's very important <laughs> for you and me that I don't give you stuff that winds up in a landfill or stuff that you don't want. Talk to me a little bit about that. Just to, you know, like, what do I say to my wife who spent the whole day Saturday with me rolling up sleeves? And we did throw stuff in dumpster land, stuff that just had to go away. We recycled a whole bunch. You know, there's old crazy defense signs and Joe Flacco signs, the purple signs. I used to hand that at the Ravens games. I had leftovers. And what do I do with them 15 years later? Um, and we recycled those. But I'm trying to find the right home for stuff. And we have stuff that's very usable. I mean, more stereo equipment and crazy stuff like that that I don't know what to do with. And I think of you first. But I also know I don't want to be bringing something over that you can't use. So give us a little bit of a guideline. And I know we can go online and probably get some more on this, too. Yeah, you can go online. Well, we, we take basically anything um, that's not a large appliance, tires, um, you know, broken dishes. Definitely, you know, we don't want those. But basically anything. Um, we can take most furniture as long as it doesn't have, you know, obviously it has to have rips and tears and, you know, it's worn uh, because furniture is heavy, heavy to get rid of if, we, if it doesn't sell in our store. Well, I but think this... Wood, this little desk will sell. I, it's, it's in great shape, so we're going to oh, give yeah. it to you. Uh, we got lots yeah. of things to give to Lisa. Lisa Rosiniak's here. She is from Goodwill uh, of the, the Greater Chesapeake. They, they have the little the little, little truck that I bring out each and every week at the Crab Cake Tour. At some point, I'm going to get you and John out for a crab cake. I keep talking to you about it. I know you all are busy, but at some point, we'll make a little bit of time. And this is the fun part of the show. Uh, you know, my wife's going away for a couple weeks with her sister. They go up into the woods and hiking. And um, I got a great show that I'm going to in a couple of weeks, and I have a belt buckle for you. Because these are the kinds of things that people clean out. There's my KC and the Sunshine Band belt <laughs> buckle. So I got some disco for you. And this is my newest one. Uh, this is my newest belt buckle. Uh, uh, and I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but I was a big Saturday Night Fever guy back in the day and a disco guy. And when I when I came across this beautiful Bee Gees belt buckle, I thought, you know, I'm going to show that to Lisa next time she's on the show. Very so great. there, you like my gorgeous, belt buckle. Gorgeous. I'm not all classic rock. There's a little disco in here, Lisa, you know, a little little dancing involved. That's awesome. That is awesome. I need to see the whole, whole collection. You need to put the whole collection up. Uh, well, the collection's not complete yet. I'm about to pick up a blue oyster cult. I'm not kidding. Get out. <laughs> you know, you know what would top off your collection is the Ravens, not not the football team. Band. Ravens, the band. The band. Yeah. Local. They didn't make a Pacifica belt buckle, but I'll get together with Rob Fahey and Keith Brewer right now, and we'll come up with something. Yeah. That's a good idea is to make a – that's it. I'm going to make a homemade rave. Okay. I'm, I'm on. They had a great logo, too. They had that great 1980s I thing know. going on. Perfect. See, you're local. You, yeah. Next thing you, you next thing we'll be talking kicks and crack the sky with you. Lisa Rosiniak, she's a rock and roll. Crack the sky. Oh, my gosh. That would be incredible. They played last week. See, they're still out. John Palumbo, Rick Wachowski, they're still doing it. They were at the Heritage Fair a couple years ago. So I'll get you out for some rock and roll before it's all over. Hey, for folks that want to uh, contribute, do anything, is the best thing leave stuff at the store? And obviously the information for what you guys are doing in jobs programs and things they could do to be supportive. Your Excel Center is coming online soon too it sure is next year all right well i'll be telling telling more stories showing more belt buckles uh get together this uh, fall and clean your closets out take care of our friends at goodwill and remember uh behind all the things that they do there's a jobs program and the excel center and lots and lots of good information including recycling stuff so that i don't see turtle problems next time i'm in why we'll <laughs> clean some beaches up lisa's here i'm there we are wnst am 1570 towson baltimore and we never stop talking baltimore positive